Welcome to the ACC Panic Patio alongside Lauren Brownlow. I'm Joe Obias. Where do you want to start? Well, <laughs> Duke, Duke lost. They rushed the field on Duke. Well, that was, I think, more about like, wow, we have a football team that's 4-0 and than it was about, be in my opinion. No, I think I think you just rushed the field when Duke is on the road. When you, when oh, you get a, when you get does a this count as a court storm? We'd have to ask uh, Brett Strilo about Brett, that. I'm, that still, I'm still waiting on our, our friend you know Brett Strilo to do that. I would allow it, too. I think you add it to the board. I really do. Yeah, I, I, I kind of do too. So I mean, the funny thing is, Duke was still competitive. Uh, Kansas got out to a nice lead. Duke fought back in that game. I still think that Duke's overall season, the story is just Mike Elko having refreshed this team. They've yeah. got a competent enough offense that might prove to be a problem for, say, Carolina's defense. Because apparently, what we found out this weekend in ACC play, you can have one of the worst offenses statistically going into a game and still be able to move the ball at ease, especially on the ground against this Tar Heels team. Right, like, it, it's something where we were going in, we were like, can they move the ball, or will Carolina's defense just getting in the way be enough? But sadly, they usually weren't even in position to get in the way half the time, seemingly. And yeah. you've got Dan Orlovsky roasting the defense on TV, talking about why are they lining up 11 yards off of people? Why are they leaving the tight end open? Like... That's the thing. Notre Dame came into this, I think, what was it, 113th or yeah. something awful in yeah. offensive rankings. Like, if you can't – and it, it was mind-boggling to me. Like, I'm not even saying that they should have, like, shut them down. No one no. was expecting that. No. But after they allowed that third third and seven at the – or whatever it was, the, the quarterback run, mm -hmm. converting that third and seven at the end of the first quarter, because they played well for the first quarter. They yeah. did. It was like everything broke. Everything came apart, and they were hot. Like, they were terrible after that for most of the rest of the game. And there were a couple bad calls, including that defensive pass interference uh, on a fourth down uh, that extended things. And Mac Brown got super mad, and he tossed his hat and everything else. And I think at that point, Mac Brown was just trying to make a point. Yeah. I mean, and, that, and that's kind of where things are right now. Mac Brown's going to have to handle this carefully going forward because as embarrassing as Saturday was against Notre Dame, it's not like it hasn't been added to the pile of other embarrassing defensive efforts. You know, Over miscommunication, the years. miscommunication, out of position, lack of discipline, dumb penalties, all that stuff. This has been a constant. It's, this is a feature under the Mac Brown era. Uh, and at one point, at some point, you have to just. It, it's on him. It's on Dre Bly. It's on who they're recruiting. I on keep their, saying. Yeah, the staff. Yeah. I keep saying. Well, they, they clearly have the talent. Well, do they? I mean, at some point, you do have to kind of ask that question. We understand that recruiting rankings can kind of go up and down based on the staff and the school and everything else. I Just mean, talk kind to, of, although... Talk to Steve Logan about that. He'll be yeah. all about that sort of stuff, right? I so, mean, I didn't follow it as closely, but there were definitely people that chose Carolina that were already, like, four stars or whatever, sure. and they had State in the running sure. or whoever else. Sure. So, like, what would they have done if those teams got them, right. docked them so, a star? Like, some of that's a little exaggerated, my, in my, my opinion. My, but, yeah. my, my point here is that there's a lot of fingers to point as to why Carolina's defense has been as consistently bad as they've been and have taken them out of games or put in – the put, put the offense in a position where that's they have the, to bail them out all the time, but you can't do that all the time. I know you kind of went on a tweet thread about that yesterday. Well, that's the thing. I mean, when you look at Carolina's Orange Bowl team, what did they do well? Mm -hmm. the, the defense, I would argue, was better, mm -hmm. or played better anyway. Maybe not talent-wise, it wasn't better, but they played better. But also, Carolina had a real running game. They had guys that could yeah. make something happen in Javante Williams and Michael Carter. And while they've had decent rushing attacks since, mm -hmm. they have a lot of times it's been like heavily Sam Howell. Now Drake May was their leading rusher yesterday. And yeah. I think you're asking a whole lot of a you know, redshirt freshman quarterback to come in there and literally have to carry the offense for the entire game, mm -hmm. especially against a defense that came in. That was a good defense coming in. Like they, they had held Ohio State in check. Like so to me, if you want to, yes, can you critique things about their offense? I'm not saying you can't. But at the same time, like, you're asking a lot of them right now when you can't stop anybody. Yeah. you got to play complementary football. That's how you're going to win games. And right now, North Carolina is very, very bad at that. But this game, I was texting with Jillio yesterday, and all week, you know, Jillio was absolutely right talking about the offensive line. We knew yeah. that this game was going to be decided on the lines, both offense and defense. And it played out exactly like that, which gets to 
the rest of the ACC and the rest of the Coastal. I'll know more about this North Carolina team yeah. next week when they play Virginia Tech at 3.30. Well, I don't time. know. That's always a cursed game for them. Well, It if, always has been. If Virginia Tech, which cannot do anything. If they lose to Virginia Tech and, and they get run over again, yes. that's. That's what I'll learn. I don't know. I mean, we'll see. But, like, if they lose a close one again, that's just chalk it up to a Carolina-Virginia Tech. I, if, mm. Because I know right now Carolina fans are, are upset. And I understand why. And they have every reason to be upset. I yeah. look at the rest of the Coastal Division, and other than Pitt, come on. Like, who is really there? Well, there's that. And then there's also just looking at Carolina in a vacuum, right? Yeah. Like, I, I saw some people saying, well, maybe Carolina fans had unrealistic expectations this year. And I'm no. like, actually, that's not true. Like, most of them just no. thought they could get to a bowl. Yeah. That's reasonable. Eight and four, they thought eight the and offense would have growing pains, which, you know. Eight and four is still there, by the way. I, I guess. No, but they, that's what the they, I think the biggest thing they wanted to see, they have a new defensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. They have guys now that have talent that have been there for a couple years on this defense. They wanted to see the defense get better. And instead, what they've seen so far is the exact it's, opposite. It's, it's more of the same. That they just wanted the defense to be, like, average. That's the thing, too. They weren't looking for, no. like, the Steelers, you know, <laughs> Iron Curtain or anything. No. They were just like, hey, can this defense be, like, middle of the pack? Nope. Like, maybe even slightly below average? No, they have to be terrible. And that's not going to be good enough, no matter what kind of offense you have, frankly, but especially one that thing. has some weaknesses. North Carolina has... North Carolina has enough offensively, and I do believe in Drake May and the learning. And we saw some mistakes from Drake May yesterday, but, I mean, look, he's a freshman, and these things are going to be a process for him. But I do think that North Carolina offensively is still good enough that they're going to be a factor in the Coastal Division. Yeah, And I, agree. I look at the rest of what we've seen out of the Coastal, and props to Duke. Like I said at the beginning of this conversation, it's entirely possible that the way Duke's been moving the ball and Riley Leonard – they might have their day with North Carolina when they get to that matchup. But Miami's a hot gar hot garbage mess. Virginia Tech, they're already ready to move on from Brent Pry. if you look at the message boards. Well, I know, I'm kidding. Georgia Tech is probably going to be firing Jeff oh, Collins here relatively soon. They got in the red zone five times and scored brutal. zero of them. Brutal, brutal, brutal. Zero Virgi times. Virginia has dropped off like Although they, they hung in more against Syracuse than I thought. Because yeah. that... That's the thing to watch for me, right? Yeah. When you look at, like, Virginia or Virginia Tech, mm -hmm. maybe even a Miami to a lesser extent, is, like, how much do these programs that have first-year head coaches, mm -hmm. do they start to kind of figure it out midway through the we'll season, see. right when teams we'll like see. Carolina and Duke might be playing them? We don't know. Look, all I'm saying is that North Carolina still has the ability to stay in this thing in the Coastal, despite the fact that Saturday was pretty much yet another embarrassment for the defense and for the coaching staff. All right. Uh, moving on to next week. Well, we have to talk about the, the Clemson-Wake Forest games. I do think it factors into the NC State-Clemson game, which is going to be a 7.30 game day special on ABC. Wait, this game played out in the way that I thought it was going to play out yeah. from Wake's perspective offensively. Sam Hartman, the mesh, the where, where Clemson's secondary is right now, Oof. I was of the belief that this was going to be a really great opportunity for Wake for Oh, and off the Liberty game, like a little bit of a reset. I thought it was going to be. Do they play to the level? Except what, Wake? Wandy? No, 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 no. It no. seems like they might. I think. I think they just got. I think they just had a bad game against against Liberty. Yeah, maybe. So I looked at it offensively that Wake Forest was going to give Clemson some freaking problems. That played out to be true, and I thought Wake was going to pull it off because I was not of the belief that DJ Uyunglele was going to be able for the majority of a game make big throw after I big throw. I told you, I'm a believer. And I, you know, because because we've had this conversation about who's going to be the quarterback for the NC State game and everything else, we assumed or we speculated that if Dabo was going to make a, a move, it was going to be for this game. Exactly. And then get ready for the for the NC State But game. he also, I think he had enough respect for even Wake to know yes. that, like, I can't put a freshman quarterback Maybe. out there and ask him to score a million points. And honestly, Wake's defense did better than I think people thought. They gave yep. they gave Clemson a lot of trouble at times, but credit to Iangola. Like, he stepped up and made some amazing throws. Yeah, honestly. look, Dabo's, Dabo's belief in DJ, um, a lot of people were rolling their eyes at uh, at Dabo this, uh, this, this July at ACC kickoff. He was making fun of message boards and all the offensive coordinators that are out there. Even I was kind of like, man, Dabo's doubling down on things with a belief. But you know what? There's a reason why he's Dabo, and I'm sitting here doing an ACC panic room. Dabo knows what the hell he's doing. The belief in DJ's pulled off, and that's going to set up for an interesting test for State's defense next week. Yeah, absolutely, because, you know, I mean, no offense to UConn, but, well... <laughs> 
I mean, no, we all, can stop there. All the offense to UConn. Come yeah, on. Yeah, and and ECU even. I think you know they took that loss to Navy, and I know ECU always play. I, I get it. I've yeah. seen this play out a million times. Yeah. I've seen Carolina and State play them, and I know they play up. I understand mm-hmm. that. So I think that yeah, you know, there's still, but you know. State got a nice transitive win over Texas yesterday with Texas Tech. Um, and as much as there was nitpicking going on about that game, myself included, yeah. right? Like, they they controlled most mm-hmm. of that game. And so there's a lot to like, I think, um, from what we've seen so far. But, yeah, it's going to be a big test. It's going to be tough there for sure. And we did see State struggle in their only road game this year. Um, again, I get the ECU. It's, like, magical. I've, I've seen it. I've seen the Greenville powers I'm, myself. I'm Greenville. I've seen them put up 70. Uh, But, yeah, like, I think it'll be an interesting test for sure. And then also for the offense because they really got going. They did. And it was nice to see them really get all their weapons involved against UConn. It's UConn. I mean, yes, but here's the thing. We hadn't really seen as much of those guys as I think we were expecting to. Like Devin Carter, uh, Porter Rooks. I'm like, where have those guys been? Mm -hmm. You know, they can catch. And they did. They did. They did in this game. Now, uh, one quick note about the Wake Forest Clemson game. To make a note, and then an overall point about the Atlantic and where Wake Force fits in all of this. Look, Dave Clawson knows what the hell he's doing. Obviously, I would have liked it had they gone for on it for fourth and five at the end of regulation. This where is some, were they? Because I was I was a little occupied at that point. They, okay. were at the, they were at the fifty yard line, fourth with and five. Forty nine seconds, right? With forty nine seconds left in the game. I mean, and I think Clemson had just used their last timeout. To me, the, yeah. to me, when and we saw this when Clemson came to North Carolina a few years ago in Mac Brown's first season, when you've got a chance against a team that clearly has more talent than you, eventually things are going to wear down over time. And I want, yeah. I want to take my chances in regulation and keep the ball away from them if I can. I also somewhat understand why he didn't. Like it's midfield for one. You're going to put your defense it right is. back out it there. Is. It is. DJ's feeling himself. Uh, I mean, you look. could literally lose the game on that. And I think he thought, like, look, we're we're at home. Yeah. Better to give my team that. I'm sure he like for him. I don't think he viewed it necessarily as that. Like he views his team on a, on a as on a, capable on the, yeah. of beating Clemson. So yes. that's yes. that's part of it too. Like and why, hey, you know why what? they don't have to play like the plucky underdog. If Sam Harmon can thread the needle there at the end, you know, then I look like an idiot. And they win in overtime. I mean, it is what it is. It was it was a great game, honestly. It, no, it really was a great game. Credit to I, Wig. I don't hang your head too much. And I tweeted this out like what's what I hate's going to happen in these situations is that you know what's going to happen. Wake Forest and their Dave Clawson, any coach or any any program in the country would be very, very happy to take Dave Clawson Apparently right not. because no. <laughs> If they gave him the time. That's the problem. Uh, instead, they want to throw a bunch of money at Mario Cristobal well, and, for, and, like, no results. They want to throw fair, money at Jimbo Fisher for, like, how is that working out in the to, grand scheme of things? You see Mel, Mel Tucker's making, what, $9 million a year to do what at Michigan State? Right. To be fair, like, I think Dave also is, I believe that he is somewhat happy where he is. Yeah, it's a good yeah. situation for him, and he makes plenty of money. Yes. But at the same time, you don't even hear, like, School X is reaching out to Dave Fawcett. Yeah. And that's what boggles my mind, honestly. So, I think it speaks to a larger point about the Atlantic Division where um, Florida State is on the come up. Louisville can be feisty. You talk about Syracuse. Louisville's right? playing really well now. After yes. Kind of a shaky yes. Start. Yeah. Got Wake Forest, obviously, NC State, and Clemson. The Atlantic really is yeah. coming through as the deepest of the divisions. This is the best year I can think of for them. Maybe. I, mean, I don't know about ever, but it's yeah. close. No, it's it's definitely up there. And Wake Forest is absolutely still in the mix because we don't know. I do think, I know Julio has pointed this out on the show a couple times, that two losses is probably going to be, a, this could be a two loss division winner at this point. Two, that that might be what we're looking at. But we'll see because the Atlantic is a little, it's I don't spicy know, man. this year. I don't know that I see Clemson getting over that. We'll see. I don't know that I see them losing two more. Oh. Like who too? They're going to lose to State. I guess FSU is possible. possibility. FSU is entirely possible, too. Yeah. But they're going to lose to State on Saturday in Death Valley. Well, you also thought Carolina would beat Notre Dame, so. I did tell you that was not going to happen. Whoops. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, you, you immediately texted me, too, when that game went final. Yeah. I got the I told you text from Brownlow. I mean, I'm not trying to be, like, whatever about mm-hmm. it, but, I mean, that mm-hmm. is. <laughs> it's, anyway. Listen. Yeah. Let's go wrap it up for this edition of the ACC Panic Room. We'll see you all later in the week.